guys, I'm here with uh, baby Angie. <laughs> you guys haven't seen her in a little bit. She is the real born Layla Awake. Uh, she's one of the prototypes reborn by Samantha Rose Harker, one of my favorite reborn artists. And um, she has actually gorgeous um, painted hair. So anyway, she's she's a real cutie. I haven't, um, she's one of those babies I haven't had a lot of time to bond with. And I, you know, I just thought, you know what? It'd be great to just do a changing video with her, spend some time with her, um, and and I'll tell the story again about how I adopted her because some of you guys may be new to my channel. But I'm going to go ahead and get her changed. So let's go ahead and um, uh, get her changed. And I'm going to put her into um, a new outfit. Oh, let me go ahead and show it to you. This is one of the uh, rompers I got from my haul. I hope it's not too big. We'll see how it fits. It's by Mayor All. And these were the ones that came in a two pack and they were on sale at children's salon for really a great price. They were, they ended up being $10 a piece, which is, um, a really great price for mayoral, which is a very nice, um, European brand. So, <laughs> so I, um, so it's funny, like Layla, so, oh, so Angie, she really reminds me I, I always like I'm intri I'm really intrigued by this sculpt's um, expression because she's kind of not like she's not laughing like I have um, obviously some dolls in my collection like my um, my Kai who is Phoenix by Andrea Arcello and then uh, Maisie by Andrea Arcello as well who and they are they definitely have more like laughing expressions which I absolutely love and I can't quite figure her expression as she's she's kind of like she's she's smiling a little bit but it's almost more like a Mona Lisa smile that's what it reminds me of um, it's like a half smile <laughs> so so it's quite pretty unique you know as far as like baby expressions go but let's go ahead and put this outfit on her and see how she looks um, oh and for those of you guys who are wondering about the like kind of mermaid outfit she was wearing just now this really cute top with them it's the brand is called Health Tex, and I have, I'm actually not sure where I got this. I think I might have gotten it from Walmart. That would be my best guess. I think it was from Walmart. So, there you go. <laughs> so, I, yeah, and, and I, and I kind of, I, I, I buy both, I guess, like, high and low, you know, when it comes to baby clothes, like, both the less expensive brands as well as some of the nicer brands, too. Um... Yeah, I, I know one of my biggest splurges when I first got um, my my Emery May, who's a portrait baby of my daughter, um, and that's my Isla. When I first got her, I splurged and got her a, a little Burberry dress <laughs> from like Neiman Marcus. That was like the most most money I've ever spent on any like baby outfit. Okay, and as I'm putting this on her, it looks a little bit big on her, but let's go ahead and fully get her dressed and we can then make an assessment. Oh, yeah, it does look a little bit. I think it works though. That's the thing with rompers. If if it's a little bit too large, you can still make it work because it can just be kind of more like a longer, <laughs> longer romper. And if it's a bigger baby, it could just be a little it can just fit a little bit shorter. Aww. She looks really cute. Hi. Um. <laughs> Aw, she's she's really nice to hold. <laughs> Aw, she looks really darling. I just love Samantha's painting. I don't know how to do this like super like pale, more more pale like peaches and cream kind of coloring. I, I'd love to. I'd really like to learn. Oh, she's really sweet. What a sweetheart. Oh my goodness. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you know, when I, when I look at her, I can't visibly see Motling, but, um, I think it's, no, it is there. I think it's just very subtle. So I'd, I'd love to, yeah, just in my own painting, like kind of learn how to achieve that look, but yeah, she looks really, really cute. 
Oh, and I wanted to just um, talk about one thing because there's one common reader left for me, one of my viewers left for me that um, got me thinking a little bit. And she was just saying that she is wanting to work up the courage to make her first YouTube video, but she's just really um, nervous about it because she's naturally shy and introverted and is worried about what people will say and worried about what people will think. And so... Um, so I thought I would just chat about that a little bit. Um, so I guess the question, you know, that I wanted to talk about was like, okay, should I, or should I not go on YouTube? <laughs> um, and I personally debated with that for the longest time before I started my channel. Um, I've had my channel now for, gosh, I think it's been a year and four months or something like that. I think I started in the spring of, um, yeah, like I think it was like June, it maybe spring, spring or early summer time frame um, last year. So it was 2017 that I started my channel. So anyway, um, but I debated a long time before I decided to, to go for it. And because there are pros and cons of being more of a public collector versus a private collector. And I think that overall, um, being on YouTube has been a really positive experience for me. Like it's, I think the, th the thing that I've really enjoyed is just getting a chance to kind of, you, you kind of go from being more of a spectator to being a little bit more active in the community, um, and just allowing people to get to know you a bit, which is really cool. And there were these channels that like I've, I have watched like for, a long time for years, like uh, Stephanie's channel and Love with Reborns 2011. And I watched Hello, Melissa Sue and Life with Crystal and, and a bunch of others. And then there are several that I was watching, you know, actively as well, you know, even before I made my first video. And, and I was also in that same boat, like trying to work up the courage to just make my first video. And my very first videos, um, that I, th I think I made was a box opening of my Saskia. It's not the Saskia that I have today. Um, it was my Jenna, who um, was a, uh, she was a rooted hair brunette Saskia. Super cute. So she has a new mommy. Um, and I sold her last year. But um, it was, I did that box opening. I didn't have this tripod. So right now I, I film with my phone and it's on a tripod. I didn't have this tripod. I was just holding it in my hand, doing this box opening. It was extremely, like, it was, you know, it, it was pretty like quick and you know, didn't really know what I was doing, <laughs> but not that I do know what I'm doing now. Even I, I just kind of hop on and say random things and, and then voila, there's a video. But, um, I think that, you know, for me, I, I kind of, as I was doing the videos, I was like, Oh, this is actually like really fun. And it's actually really cool to like get people's comments and kind of engage in discussion. And sometimes there'd be tag videos going around. So really interesting to kind of see what different people have to say in their videos when they do tags. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that when you are um, a creator, like you definitely like want to keep up with what's going on in the community. And I know for myself recently, that's been a challenge just with how busy work has been. And I've also like discovered audiobooks And I don't know if you guys have heard of this app called Libby, but you can borrow audiobooks and um, uh, digital books for free from your local library. And, um, it's really, really cool. And so I've been, cause I've been traveling a lot for work. So I've been like listening to a lot of audiobooks and reading a lot of books on my Kindle and things like that. So that's been really, really neat. Um, but I will say that does take a, a, a little bit away from some of my YouTube uh, watching time, because if I get like really engrossed in an audiobook, um, you know, I'll, I'll like end up listening to that and not like watching as many videos or not watching as much TV. So not that that's a bad thing, but then I do sometimes feel like, oh, I'm getting a little bit out of the loop on what's going on in the community. So I'm sure there's like so much stuff that happens that I'm like not even aware of because I've missed so many videos. Um, and you know, I think the big, um, so yeah, so let me finish up with kind of the positives of being on YouTube. I think um, there's a there are a lot of benefits to being part of the community and you know kind of having your own like audience if you will and so when it comes time to have to sell a baby from your collection um, or for me as also a reborn artist uh, finding customers like I think my customers have all pretty much found me on YouTube I 
Um, I don't really like post in the different reborn groups on Facebook. I don't really post that much on doll fans. So really, um, people have found me through YouTube, which is so awesome. And I think just with over time, like getting to know me and like watching my videos, I think that there's a little bit of a trust that's built in because people feel like they really have gotten to know you and can trust you if you guys, if you were to do a transaction, um, but, you know, and I think that that's a huge plus versus if you're, if someone's trying to just buy a doll from some random person who lists it, like you don't know who that person is. You don't know if they're trustworthy. You don't know if they are in, like an active part of the community. If, um, and you know, it's, it's a little bit more of a nerve, can be more nerve wracking to buy and sell, you know, with somebody that you don't know. So, um, so that's been a huge plus for me, like just having an avenue where like people can find me and, you know, and where I can gain customers in terms of, you know, as a reborn artist. Um, the other positive for me is, is of course, like I, you know, we, I think we never like to talk about the money, I guess, but, um, once you do get to the point where, you know, you, your channel is large enough and you can monetize. And I know for a lot of us, that's not necessarily the primary reason that we're doing YouTube, but, um, but, but Hey, it, it's, it's a nice little bonus to get a little bit of, you know, I, I get a small, small, little, tiny, tiny, tiny paycheck from, <laughs> from Google. Um, you know, e each month, it's definitely not anything that, you know, anything that anyone could live off of. It's, it's just something I see as like a little bit of a bonus that, you know, helps support my doll hobby, maybe helps justify, <laughs> you know, buying all the clothing and stuff like that. Um, uh, and and I really view YouTube and my reborn, um, uh, reborning as a business. And so I, I keep track of what I'm spending and what I'm earning and all of that. And so, um, so, and right now, of course, I think the business is, uh, you know, not profitable because I definitely buy more than I earn. And, but then that becomes a, a, ta a write off come tax season too, which is really helpful. So that's another plus, you know, of being on YouTube and just, if you do decide to take it seriously and make regular videos and, and, and try to grow your channel, then, um, that's another, um, benefit of it. And, but yeah, but really for me, the top one is really just, it's fun to make the videos. I do enjoy that. I enjoy sharing. I enjoy like, you know, it's more fun, like, you know, doing things with friends, you know, and that's kind of what this feels like. You know, you guys are all like my friends who are watching this video and, you know, we get to like, ooh and ah over like a really cute doll or a really cute outfit. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, so let's talk about the downsides. Um, the downside, the biggest downside I think is just <laughs> like the, ne some getting negative comments, you know, there's, um, and there's no way around that. You know, there are so many people who, um, create these, you know, accounts and, you know, there's, there are no subscribers. They don't create content. They're just, you know, commenting on other people's videos. And, um, and, and, you know, I, I've, I've definitely gotten my fair share of negative comments. My mantra right now is like delete and block. And, you know, I, and, and, and sometimes I'll report, you know, a, a user who, if it was especially like a really bad comment and really, you know, I thought was just harassing and whatnot. So, um, and, and some of you guys may see some of those comments, uh, but usually once I see a comment like that, you know, I, I, I delete it immediately and I block the person and then, and then I'm done with it because I just don't have the the time for that. I, I and, and I don't even want to dignify it with a response. It, it really is just not even worth my time, you know, when, when I get comments like that. And um and it's especially like, you know, but it is upsetting, you know, especially if it's a comment where, you know, I um have my daughter in the video with me, for example, and somebody's saying something mean to her. And and you guys, these are really isolated incidents. They happen so rarely, but when they do, I get really like I'm just like seriously, really, you know, and I, I'm human and I get upset and annoyed and, um, and all of that, but you know, we just have to like move on and just not, it's, it's just not even worth it. And so, um, but yeah, I know it can be upsetting and I know that sometimes if you get, you know, it's easy to like, if you get criticism on a certain video, it can be easy to feel like, well, I don't want, you know, so, some people have gotten so like hurt by things that happen in the community and by comments and things like that, that they don't, that it makes the whole YouTube experience so negative And then they want to leave the community or even leave the hobby altogether. Like even just 
having the dolls like reminds them of the, the negative experiences they had. And I think that that is so sad, you know, so, and I personally just will never understand why we can't all just be positive and, you know, encouraging. And if you don't have something nice to say, just move on and don't say it. And, um, but yeah, like I can, I, I can say this until I'm blue in the face and it's going to keep happening. So, you know, whatever it, it is what it is. Um, and yeah, you can also, you know, set modes like where you approve every comment before it goes on the wall or you um, can hide your likes and dislikes, hide the number of subscribers. And you know, as a, you know, you should just do whatever you want to do and what you feel comfortable with. It's your channel. And remember that this is supposed to be fun and you're supposed to be um, first and foremost here for yourself. Like for me, um, yeah, I've, had such busy weeks. I've really had like a busy two or three months at work. Uh, and there have been some nights where I've been working till 11 o'clock or midnight. Um, and you know, yesterday was a Saturday morning at the time, at least that I'm filming this video and I hopped online and I did some emails. I, um, you know, did my expense report and you know, there was just things that I had to take care of. And so it, you know, so especially when things are busy at work, I don't interact as much with my dolls, but then I, I always, I like to make, make sure I have regular videos coming out. So, you know, having a channel, it's, it's actually good because it kind of keeps me in that discipline of interacting with my collection because, you know, that's kind of how, you know, we can kind of lose interest too, potentially, you know, if you're not continuing that interaction and, um, it's like a relationship, right? Like you got a fan, um, fan, you have to spend time and, and invest time, you know, to keep that relationship going strong. So not to get all like, um, you know, weird and everything, but yeah, I, I just thought about that. Like with any hobby or anything that we're interested in, anything that's important to us, if we don't spend the time, then, you know, it, you, you may lose that interest or it may just, you know, or there may be seasons, but the nice thing is if you are a private collector and you just, and you do feel like you just like really need a break from the hobby for a while, you can just, you can do that. You can like put your dolls away for several months and, you know, not make any video. I mean, you're, you're not making videos. And so nobody is expecting anything like that from you. So I guess that is a, um, potentially one downside of being a channel creator is, and being on YouTube is, you know, especially if you're, you're someone who wants to have regular content coming out, that means you need to <laughs> be doing videos and you need to be interacting with, with your dolls. Um, and sometimes there may be some days that you may not feel like it as much and you're like, shoot, but I need to have another video coming out soon. So, um, and I think that that's probably natural. I, 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 my could big kudos to those of you who have had channels for like years and years, like coming up with, you know, fresh ideas and fresh videos and things like that. And I remember like when I first started my channel, I was doing daily videos for a while. I, I wasn't filming every day, but I'd make a bunch of videos at once and then just schedule them out for uploads. And I'd have one like coming out pretty much every day. Cause I felt like I had so much I wanted to talk about and I don't feel that's the case for me as much right now, but, um, but anyway, it is, it is interesting. So, and I think it's just because work is just especially crazy and busy. And I also think I'm kind of moving beyond the honeymoon phase with my hobby and into something that feels like, yeah, like this is enhancing my life, but I'm not quite as obsessed with the hobby as I initially was, which I think is totally normal and it's probably healthier and it's probably a good thing. But, um, anyway, so not to get all like philosophical, but those are just some of my thoughts, but and so, yeah, I guess my advice would be if you're thinking about doing a channel, maybe you've been watching YouTube for a while, um, maybe give it a try, you know, maybe make a video or two and, and, um, and see how that goes. And then in just in terms of growing your channel, I think the best advice I have is just to, um, you know, be involved in the community, comment genuinely on other people's videos. Like don't just leave a comment saying, Oh, Hey, I'm new to the community. I just started making videos. Can you come over and subscribe? Can I have a shout out? And, um, and, and, you know, I think for like, for me and for others, like, 
like I'm definitely more likely to come over and check out your video if I feel like you're leaving like a thoughtful comment and if you just seem like a nice genuine sweet person I'll be like oh you know what let me go see if she has any videos up and I think a lot of us are the same way and so I know that for me that's like how it started for me too like I was just naturally interested in what other people had to say on their videos and was enjoying their content and leaving comments and just sort of interacting and um uh, yeah. And, and then, you know, my channel just sort of, you know, grew, you know, slowly and, and all of that. So it's, so that's kind of just my, what my advice would be. I, I know some of you guys have commented and asked me for, um, shout outs or things like that. And sometimes when I can, I do try to go over and check out your videos, um, when I can. Um, but sometimes I don't have the time and <laughs> I do apologize for that. Uh, and, uh, but I, I don't really do shout outs unless it's just a video that I'm you know, just going to comment on naturally because it's pertaining to the topic um, I'm talking about, or maybe I want to piggyback off of someone's topic, then I'll shout out their channel. Um, but it, you know, I, I think for me, it just needs to come, it needs to be a little bit more organic rather than, okay, guys, I'm going to do all these shout outs. I think there was one video I did where I did want to shout out a few channels that were pretty small and I, that I, that I was like really enjoying the content and, and I, um, and I think that's great. But I, I think, can you imagine if all of our videos we were constantly just, just, just shouting out a bunch of other channels. Like it, I think, I don't think it'd be very interesting after a while. So, so anyway, that is, um, I don't mean to ramble, but, um, I just thought it'd be helpful to just, you know, give my two cents. I, I, I wanted to, um, I was thinking about this as, you know, I got that, that comment, uh, from the, the one viewer, but, but basically if you decide you don't like being on YouTube, and there was someone I remember on Dolphin who posted, you know what, I've decided being on YouTube is not for me. And she decided to take down her videos or make them private. And you know what, that is completely fine. Like it is, it can be something that you try and you know, if you decide you don't like it, not a big deal. Um, so anyway, all right, well, that's all I had to say about that topic. Um, hope you guys um, enjoyed it. And yeah, I would love to hear your comments below. Like what are your, what are the pros and cons of being on YouTube if you're a channel creator? If you're not a channel creator, um, have you thought about being on YouTube? Um, if you haven't yet made videos and started your channel, uh, what is, you know, what, what's holding you back? I, I would love to hear your thoughts. And I think this would be actually a really interesting dialogue. So. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video and comment below. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.